Been seeing a lot lately in the news about Obamacare, also known as the Affordable Care Act. It's been in the news a lot lately. It's under heavy attack again by the Republican Party. But is this just a case of petty bipartisanship? Is it just like two dogs barking at each other through the backyard fence? A lot of people say Obamacare is one of the worst things that has ever come out. Um, I've heard people say that it is, it, it will do more damage to America than all the terrorist attacks combined, which I think is an extremely ignorant statement. I, I really do think that that is kind of an extreme accusation to make. But nonetheless, the Republicans have a plan to counteract Obamacare. Their plan, also known as Patient Care Act, uh, CARE is an acronym, um, it would keep a few parts of the Obama plan, so obviously they don't think it's all bad. Uh, some of the things it would keep are there's a plan in both Obamacare and the patient care that would subsidize low-income families to help them afford private insurance, which I kind of get the feeling was the purpose from the beginning of what Obamacare was trying to achieve. So that's a very good thing. You know, I, I think, you know, it, it would really be unfortunate if somebody just couldn't afford insurance and they needed it just because it was too expensive. So I do think it's a good thing to, you know, help out a little bit. So, and it would also, um, it also would keep the provision that allows young adults up to the age of 26 to stay on their parents' insurance. You know, when you're 26, you might be in college, you might have a pretty crappy job, you might not be able to get uh, insurance very easily. So it's good that you can stay on your parents for up to the age of 26. And another good thing that they would be keeping on this new proposal is that there is, in Obamacare, there's a lifetime cap. If you have some kind of chronic life-threatening disease, it's going to be very expensive, such as um, you need an organ transplant or you have cancer or something like that. Both plans would... They would, they would be in your corner. They would keep the lifetime cap on your insurance to prevent you from losing your coverage. They'll make sure that you keep your coverage. You can afford to keep the coverage. So, But obviously, there would be differences. Uh, for instance, they would eliminate the ban on withholding coverage when it comes to pre-existing conditions. Um, it's, you know, it would, they'd instead structure it more like what we are all used to, the way we have it now. If you lose your insurance, anything that you caught in the meantime or anything you have wrong with you, if you were, if you have a lapse in coverage, then you would possibly not be able to be covered by certain insurance companies or you have to pay a higher premium. Granted, this is not ideal, but this is, this is more familiar to what we're all with, um, it is, it is a little bit, it is less than ideal. I do, I do think that. So maybe, maybe that's something that can be addressed later. Uh, another thing is the Medicaid expansion. Um, it would no longer apply to childless adults. It would only apply to pregnant women, children, and families who are all below the poverty line. So these are all very broad, broad subjects. So what you're asking now is, what are the differences that are going to actually affect me? What are the differences that are going to affect the majority of us? Well, for one, under this plan, um, employer-based insurance would no longer be tax-free. The cafeteria plan would essentially go out the window. Um, it would They would tax your, your employer contributions at at least 35%. Um, the idea behind this is that it would make patients pay more for their coverage. And it would give them an incentive to choose cheaper insurance plans uh, and make them shop around a little more, you know, save a little money, avoid the what are considered unnecessary treatments. Um, this and in addition with this now taxing us, another change they're doing is this would result in a very significant tax hike for the average American. Due to the tax restructuring, it would actually add a little over four thousand dollars to your taxable income. On your W-2, it would not actually get you the $4,000, but what you would be taxed on would go up by $4,000, which obviously would affect your tax returns in a very negative way. Um, the number I have seen is, on average, Americans would owe $1,400 more 
per year in taxes on average. Obviously, that's an estimate. Um, also, there are the just basic higher premiums of the Republicans' plan. Um, for instance, a 25-year-old who lives in New York City, uh, approximate income $25,000, would pay close to $3,000 a year for the um, Republican plan, the Patient Care Act, but would pay around, they'd pay almost $3,000 under that plan. But under the Obamacare plan, it would be right around $1,700. Again, these are just estimates. There's a lot of factors that would go into it, which would change that these are just basic numbers to give you an idea. Um, the plan would also give the insurance companies a lot more freedom. The freedom would allow them to charge possibly a greater fee to women over men um, and seniors. Seniors will definitely be hit hard by this. Um, people over the age of 64 under the Obama plan would be subject to nearly triple the fees of a 21-year-old under Obamacare. But under the Patient Care Act, that number could easily be five times the amount of a 21-year-old's premium. Um, it also gives the insurance companies a lot more freedom to allow them to remove certain things that we've taken for granted as being in our insurance plan, um, such as mental health or um, maternity care. It wouldn't cover these anymore. Now, if it gave you the option to forego them, that would be good. You know, it would it would be good for people who don't really feel like they need it. It would save them a little bit of money. But the question is, is it going to be a choice or is it really going to be more a case of we're just not going to offer it on this plan because, you know, that's that's extra money and we just don't want to give it to you. Um, another another thing that I, I really do feel is a definite bad thing for the patient care is Obamacare is trying to make preventive care free, such as um, blood pressure screenings and just basic, just making sure that you are remaining healthy and not actually using the insurance. But patient care would actually eliminate that. They would want to charge you for everything. And you'd, you'd, have, to, you'd have to shop around, you'd have to pick and choose, and you'd forego treatment and preventive care. Study after study have shown that preventive care is one of the first things to go when you have to pay for it. And don't get me wrong, I am not, I actually, I don't support Obamacare, but I definitely don't support patient care. I don't think either of these plans is a good idea. I think we can come up with a much better idea. So, but as I said, I, I don't actually support either of them. I've read about them, and there's a lot of legal mumbo-jumbo, which is a bit confusing when you first read it. But when you go back and read it a little bit, you pick up some of the other things. And, you know, I, I truly, I think both of these plans, I think they're flawed. I think both of them are flawed. And I think that instead of making this a Republican-Democrat issue, because the commercials on TV... They said this is not about politics. This is about healthcare. No, it's largely about politics. It's about healthcare, but it's largely about politics. I think both sides really do need to come together, and they need to squash all this. You know, well, I'm a Republican and I'm a Democrat. They need to come up with a better plan. If one side can do it, great. If then they have to work together, then they have to do it. But these these plans, they're not cutting it. Both of these plans are actually, they're pretty much, they're going to screw over the American people. So when when people, when Republicans say that Obamacare is going to destroy America, you know what? You haven't come up with any better ideas. So we need you to come up with some ideas. And to the uh, Democrats, we need you guys to come up with some better ideas because truthfully, these ideas, these are not great. I mean, I understand the concept. And I agree with the concept. This is not the way to implement them. The idea is good. The This is a classic experiment of, or a classic example of good in hypothesis, bad in experiment. So go back to the drawing board and redo all of this because, well, maybe not all of it, but redo most of it. Because, honestly, this is not going to work. We were better off the way we were before either patient care or affordable care came out. So, 
Once again, this is the Any Radical Iconoclast. I'll see you around.